Welcome. My name is Merle Whitney. In our tutorial today, we're going to be looking at creating a super scope and creating a multi scope. The role of the DHCP server is used to centralize the process of giving out IP addresses and other option assignments to systems on the network. Now within our network, we can have any number of DHCP servers on one network. What we would need to do if we're going to create scopes or more than one scope is to divide the range of addresses that you want assigned into multiple scopes. Let's say that our range of addresses for the entire network was, for example, 192.168.02 to 192.168.0100. We might, we might want to assign the first 50 addresses to scope 1 and then assign the other 50 addresses to scope 2. When we do create the scope, the following management tasks can be performed on the scope. We will be able to configure scope properties. We will be able also to configure reservations and exclusions. To set options for the scope, to activate and deactivate scopes. We will also be able to create super scopes and multicast scopes and to integrate DNS and DHCP. As I said at the beginning of the tutorial, we are going to be concentrating for this tutorial on super scope and multicast scope. In order to create a super scope, we need to have more than one scope. So we're going to open up our DHCP and we are going to create two scopes. So we want to go to Tools, DHCP. Let's open up our DHCP dialog box. We're going to expand the server name, expand IP4. Then we're going to create our first scope. Right click on IP version 4 and click on new scope. We're presented with the wizard. Welcome to the new scope wizard. And to continue, we want to click next. Here we have the scope name page. And we can type the name of the scope and let's call it scope 1. And for our description, we can say the finance department. Click on next. And we want to put in, in the IP address range, the start IP address and the end IP address of the nodes that we want for this scope within the finance department. So we're going to put 192.168.02. And our ending address is going to be 192.168.050. As you can see, the length of the network is given here as 24 and that is going to be the number of bits within the network part of the address and we can see our subnet, subnet mask here being 255 255 255 which is the network part of the address click next and here on this page if we need to add any exclusions we can add them here. Remember that exclusions are addresses or a range of addresses that are not distributed by the server. 
and for our tutorial we do not need any exclusion ranges so we're going to go ahead and click next at this point we come to the screen with our lease duration by default the lease duration is eight days however if you're going to have mobile systems on your network then you might want to shorten the lease if you have uh, if you have desktop computers and you're looking for more stable network where the computers are fixed at a particular location then we can leave the lease at eight days let's click next to continue at this point we want to configure the HCP options for the scope and we can actually configure the options now or we could configure options later. Our options are going to be like putting the IP address for the router or the IP address for the DNS server. For our tutorial, we will configure these options later. Right now, we want to click on next. And we're going to actually stop here and put in a router address. Now we started the network at 192.168.0.2. So maybe we can put a router address. And remember that your router is your default gateway. We're going to put the router address at 192.168.0.1. Then we're going to click add and continue to the next screen we don't want to put in our dns server at this point so we're just going to click next there's no win server on our network so we're going to click next and at this point you want to activate the scope for our tutorial purposes we are going to activate the scope later so we're going to click no and then we're going to click next and we have completed the scope and you can expand scope and you can see the scope options that were created for this particular scope now that we have two scopes configured we are going to create a super scope to create the super scope you want to right click on IP4 and click on New Super Scope. You're presented with the Super Scope Wizard. Click Next. And you are asked to enter a name for your Super Scope. We're going to call our Super Scope Super Scope one then we're going to click on next to continue now we had created the first scope which was scope one and we had another scope configured for this exercise so we need to select both scopes because both scopes have to be included for the super scope and then we're going to click next You have successfully completed the new super scope wizard and the following super scopes will be created so you have the two scopes scope one and scope two and we click on finish and here in our dhcp window we can see our super scope super scope super scope one the next thing that we want to do is to create a new multicast scope. To create the new multicast scope, you want to right click on IP4 and click on new multicast scope. As you can see, your wizard will open up and multicasting is a process of sending messages to a selected group of clients on the network to continue 
we want to click next. You are now asked for the multicast scope name. And you want to type a name and description for the scope. And this helps you to identify the scope and how it is to be used on the network. So we're going to call this scope multicast. for personnel department. Then click next. And here you are asked to give a IP range of addresses that will define the multiscope. And if you look, you will see that the valid IP address range is given for you. So you need actually to put in the address range that is in accordance with the valid IP address range. For our start IP address, we're going to put 224-0-0-0 as the start IP address. And for the end IP address, we're going to put 224 Two five five zero zero. We want to come down here to the time to live because we want to adjust that number. And we're going to adjust that number from 32 to 1. And the reason why we're going to make the adjustment to 1 is that we want to make sure here that no multicast packets escape the local network segment. So we're going to go ahead and click Next. Here's your Add Exclusion Pages. We're going to click Next because we don't want to add any exclusions at this time. And here we have our Lease Duration Page. And for our lease duration page, if you remember when we were creating the scope, the lease duration was eight days by default. But now we have the lease duration showing for default for this multicast scope wizard as 30 days. Now remember that multicast addresses are used for videos and audio. And you would ordinarily leave multicast scope assignments in place somewhat longer than you would with the regular with the regular unicast address. That is why we have a default length of 30 days. Click on next. And you are asked if you want to activate the multicast scope at this time. And we don't want to activate the multicast scope. So we're going to click on no and then next. Click on finish to complete the wizard. That is the end of this tutorial.